you've seen thus far, Photoshop is actually quite a large program that has a lot of features, a lot of tools, and a lot of custom settings that you can actually change to suit your own personal preferences. Now, one area in particular that you wanna actually go and utilize is Photoshop's Preferences dialog box or window. Now, that's located up underneath Photoshop, Preferences, and General. Now, General will list all of these options that are actually here, but these are sort of shortcuts to them uh, that you can actually utilize as well. You'll also find that in uh, preferences, you can actually jump to Camera Raw's preferences as well, which we've already looked at in the previous module, but you can also get to the Camera Raw preferences actually directly through Camera Raw. So if we go and click on General, you'll notice the first thing that you see in preferences is this little sidebar menu here, and that contains all of those options that we just looked at in that drop down menu. Now, what I'd like to first sort of express is that everything within preferences, or a lot of it, I should say, within preferences is cosmetic. And basically, that means that you can change the way things look, the way things actually work. Uh, with regards to, you know, for example, how you actually zoom with the scroll wheel on your mouse and a ho whole range of different things from your interface settings to how your files actually handled to the performance to uh, your actual cursors to the transparency and gamut uh, settings within Photoshop. You can change how your rulers and units work, uh, the guides, grids and slices, among other things such as your plugin and type settings as well. Now, you'll notice here there's a 3D option here, and this is primarily if you have Photoshop extended because you'll have some 3D options. If you have the standard Photoshop, then you're most likely not going to have this setting. Now, I've just quickly gone over all of those sort of um, sub-menus within Preferences, and that's primarily because there's only one key area in Preferences that is really important, and that is actually the Performance menu setting here. Uh, because this is actually going to determine how your computer, or, or I should say, how Photoshop performs with regards to your computer. And there are a couple of big settings within the performance um, submenu that submenu that actually you can customize in order to improve the performance of Photoshop running on your computer. So I really want to spend more time discussing performance settings as opposed to going through all the sort of cosmetic things because I think you'll actually get more out of it. So the first thing you'll actually notice is that we have the memory usage. Now memory usage is simply the allocated amount of RAM that uh, Photoshop is allocated from your computer. Now RAM is sort of uh, one of the components or one of the hardware components of a computer that sort of uh, determines how fast your computer runs. Now, you'll notice that Photoshop's default settings is 70%. So at the moment, Photoshop is using 70% of my computer's RAM in order to run. So what you can actually do is choose to change this setting uh, to your liking. So if you wanted uh, Photoshop to actually perform better and run faster if you're working with uh, you know, high resolution images, what you can do is actually increase this value just by dragging on this little um, slider icon that's here or using the plus and minuses, uh, minus buttons. So if you have a higher uh, allocated amount of RAM, it's going to run a lot better. But the negative of actually uh, actually allocating more RAM to Photoshop is that if you want to run multiple software or multiple programs on your computer at the same time as running Photoshop, then they're not going to perform as well because you've de you designated all your RAM or a lot of your RAM to Photoshop as opposed to those other applications. So that's sort of the negative side of actually giving Photoshop more RAM. But if you're only going to use Photoshop by itself and not going to have anything else open, then I recommend that you do increase your memory usage by a little bit more. 70% is quite good, but if your computer is quite slow, you may want to increase that. Now, the other important area within preferences or within the performance settings for preferences is the history and cache settings. Now, this will actually affect how uh, Photoshop performs and the speed that Photoshop performs on your computer. Now we have a couple of settings here for optimizing your cache levels and tile size of your documents. So here are some preset options, these top 
uh, three buttons that you can actually choose from. So tall and thin simply is optimal for editing smaller images that have many layers, but actually your computer has less RAM to work with. So that's something that you may want to set if you're working with smaller images. Whereas big and fat is primarily good for larger images that are hundreds of megapixels with fewer layers and your computer actually has a lot of RAM. So you can actually switch between them in order to actually change these settings here. And then you actually have the default button and that's primarily good for all images in between those actual settings. But if you wish, you can actually set your own settings here by actually utilizing these drop down windows. So the first one you'll see is history states. And this is the number of states that Photoshop remembers uh, with regards to all of your adjustments that you've made to your image. So if you look in the history panel, you'll find a range of states that allow you to basically undo and step back in time in the actual uh, process of editing the image. So you may make three or four adjustments, but then you want to jump back three or four steps because you weren't happy with those adjustments, then these are history states. So you can actually go back in your history panel to that exact point in time where you actually made that adjustment and undo the adjustments that you essentially don't want. Now, something to remember with history states is you if you actually increase history states which you may want to do because you know if if you're doing any cloning or uh, using the spot healing tool for example you you will actually do a lot of uh, adjustments and a lot of states and if you want to actually jump back you know 20 states then that's as far as you can go unless you click on the image which actually then will take you right back to the beginning of your image which you may not want so if you do a lot of retouching work you may want to increase the amount of history states but the thing to remember, if you start to actually increase the history states, then Photoshop actually has to remember more adjustments that you make, which actually uses up more memory and will actually slow down Photoshop. So you really want to keep the history states between 20 to 30 or 40 history states. If you go any more than that, you could really actually slow down Photoshop quite considerably, especially if you do actually start to make a lot of adjustments that Photoshop has to remember. So I recommend keeping it at least between 20 to 50 states, depending on the speed of your current computer. Now underneath that we have cache levels. Now this is the amount of levels that Photoshop remembers with regards to the resolution of your images. So essentially, when you actually magnify an image, you'll have different resolution settings. So you'll notice if you go uh, at 100% and then you jump back, you might jump back to 50% and then you might back, jump back to uh, 25%. Now in most cases, you'll find that Photoshop as a default is set for cache levels. So this would be, say, for example, 12.5%, um, 25%, uh, 33%, 55 50 percent 66 percent etc etc so the more uh levels you actually give to photoshop uh to remember with regards to uh the actual resolution of your image the, the more it's going to slow down so you want to keep that between four to six cache levels and that just means that it'll actually keep those stored in its memory so when you do magnify an image that it comes up really quickly uh as opposed to slow um, so that's just something to remember. Now underneath cache levels, we actually have the cache tile size. So with each one of those uh, high resolution images, when you actually start to zoom in on your image using the magnify tool, you'll find that they're actually made up of tiles. And that's the way Photoshop remembers the actual images. So essentially using a tile size that is actually smaller and by smaller, it's going to have, a, it's actually going to be smaller in file size as well. So, uh, at the moment it's currently set to 128 kilobytes but having a smaller file size is actually better if your images are actually um, smaller in resolution whereas if you actually have a uh, really high resolution image you really want to utilize a higher um, tile size around say 1024 kilobytes or 1028 because it's actually taking larger areas of the image to remember and they're actually going to perform faster than if you were trying to remember all these little tiny areas of an image that is actually quite high in resolution. So that's something also that you can actually play around with that's going to affect the performance of Photoshop when you jump in between those different magnifications. Finally you have the scratch disks. 
you can actually allocate uh, where your scratch disk is actually stored. So you can choose to actually set this to another hard disk as opposed to your current hard drive. Now, you should actually, for best performance, you should actually set your uh, scratch disks to faster drives uh, that are internal or a faster external interface, not necessarily the drive that actually boots your computer. Now, if you don't understand any of that, don't worry, but you just want to make sure that the scratch disk that you're using has a lot of free space because that's also going to affect how Photoshop will actually perform. So that's essentially the performance settings in preferences. And as I mentioned, most of the other settings that are actually in preferences are mainly for uh, cosmetic purposes and the way, you know, certain things uh, will perform such as your units, rulers, you can change the colors of your guides, things like that. So you can, you can play around with all those things, but the important one to really look at is obviously the performance settings because that's going to control how Photoshop performs on your computer.